Hello, I'm Emmanuel Bach. I'm back with the Two Minute Masterclass, and today it's Wieniawski's Fantasie Brillante on themes from Gounod's Faust, Opus 20. This fantasy has such a distinctive and arresting opening, not only in the solo violin part, but also in the orchestral introduction, that it's really vital that the solo violinist captures this really atmospheric quality that the first entry has. And to me, that first E, that kind of sort of piercing note, has to have a, a, a pin-like uh, ringing quality to it, a pin-like clarity right at the very start so that note really speaks and carries even though it's only piano we have to immediately capture the imagination of the audience and that is because of the story behind the music. In this piece really three worlds collide. There's the world of violin music and virtuosity, there's the world of opera and there's the world of the Faust legend. Now, Guno combined opera with the Faust legend and Wieniawski then adds violin virtuosity to create a world that combines these three worlds all together. And right from the very start, we're telling a story, of course. And it's a story that is uh, pitiful in many respects. There's this aged man, if you know anything about the story, who's disillusioned with life and ends up selling his soul to the devil essentially in exchange for uh, all sorts of wondrous things and we have to capture this sense of time passing at the start and this very opening note here there's a slightly plaintive quality to it and we can afford to linger on certain notes it says cadenza con recitativo which gives this sense of operatic time of a sense of spontaneity and we also have to ensure that there's a connection from that very first note right up to the top note here as though it's one seamless line just like a singer without any strings on our instrument and uh, that that really sets the tone for what happens a little bit later we have this material It's like there's a, a heart beating with this pom 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 pa. It's like somebody's heart beating and they're somewhat unnerved by it, by their aloneness and uh, their thoughts with them all by themselves. And uh, and we, I think it's very important that we don't give away the climax of that phrase too soon. It's also very important that we really try to find meaning in all of the fast notes, and I'm thinking especially of here. So that we really feel the pain of Faust and uh, his discomfort. There's something really wrong. And, uh, and I think it's very important that we practice those passages in different rhythms and separate bows, like this. And like this. Making sure that the fingers are really firmly and clearly on the strings. Clarity is ultimately actually more impressive than pure speed. If we can achieve a lightning-like quality that comes from real clarity, it's very impressive. There's also, of course, a very, very lyrical side to the music. And the first lyrical tune we have is here. That 
has to be played with a lot of heart. It's also important that we have a sense of ebb and flow, so finding the right tempo is really essential. Later on, there's examples, more examples of passage work, and the octave is useful to practice the broken octaves simply uh, in, in connected octaves. So like this. And uh, then elsewhere, we need to think more about the character of the music, and that's here. There we need to immediately capture this uh, demonic aspect to the music and as it says play with elan with, with this kind of flair and spirit uh, of course it does go slightly faster than that i think more like this so it's about this punchiness to the music and these violent uh, or total contrasts between the different sections and uh, that's this operatic spirit coming into play elsewhere again we have this lyricism such as here And there it's really about sounding very, very sincere. It's, it's love, so it has to sound sincere and true and genuine. There's one other tip which I have, uh, musically speaking, which is about this waltz here. And that really needs to be full of abandon and a kind of umpapa spirit to it so that we really feel this sense of joy and total uh, uh, optimism and uh, carefreeness. One other technical tip is about these sixths here. It's very, very useful to slow it down and imagine that we actually have the time to really hear all of the notes and feel all of the movements we make. So practicing separate bows in a she. That will really clarify the sound and ensure the intonation is very pure. And then two to a bow, three and four different combinations. And also ensuring that we feel like the hand and the fingers move almost before we get to the note rather than being late and sagging and it will feel like we're always catching up with the with the sixths instead of feeling like they really rise to the top and building in the dynamics there is also very very important i think the secret to this piece is really having a vision of the music and of the story and being very very patient and ensuring that we always always communicate through our sound that's all for today